everyone how are you today so this is the first time i've used my headphones isn't that strange you probably are like what um and i'm sitting outside today because it's super beautiful here so i thought um i'll do this to hopefully avoid some of the noise um, the car noise that happens on the other side of my yard so welcome it is nice and sunny here today so a little windy too but it's beautiful beautiful spring day so welcome everyone. Um, I'm sorry I missed you last week or um, I wasn't on last week, right? Um, but I'm here today and we're going to talk about um, how to know if your natural fertility program is working. And I also want to open it up to, um, or this talk up to a Q&A. So if you have questions, please start typing them um, in the comment section. Copy, uh, copy them so that you can paste them if I miss them here. You know how quickly that um, the questions scroll by and you know how much some of us who are on Periscope can get on a little bit of a tangent and miss questions. So start typing your questions, copy them, and then when I open up the q and I'm happy to um, help as best as I can. So hi again to everyone who's joining and we're going to talk first about how to know that your natural fertility program is working. So um, we get emails all the time from people who ask, how do I know that these products or this natural therapy that I'm using is working? It's a fabulous question. I think anybody and everybody who's ever taken um, or used a natural therapy has that same question or wonders the same thing. Um, so we're thankful that we get these questions, but it's also a little bit frustrating because sometimes we just don't know. Um, to be completely honest, you need to have trust in the natural therapy that you chose and you need to trust that your body can be well and can heal that truly is number one um, trust that the process the healing process takes time and know that herbs and natural therapies aren't always super quick to show you that they're working and beyond that some of us aren't um, in tune don't know how to be in tune enough to feel or know if something is working and even beyond that there's so much that goes on within the human body that we never know happens you don't feel your fingernails grow you don't feel your skin regenerate you don't feel your hair and your eyebrows grow you don't feel urine being created so that you can go to the bathroom um, some people don't feel ovulation some people don't have menstrual cramps gosh i wish everyone didn't have to have a menstrual cramp so you get the point here. There has to be a certain level of trust that you found something that has the potential to work, that it's going to take time, that your body has the ability to heal itself. And, um, and uh, beyond that, even more, <laughs> that you might see or feel things that you aren't expecting to see or feel. So for example, you've been told you have blocked fallopian tubes. Um, that's a pretty significant thing. It's shocking. It's confusing. You wonder why it happened. Some women never know why it happened. And all you really want and you're completely focused on is unblocking the fallopian tube, right? How do, do I do that? How does that happen? What are the ways that I can do that? Um, so many women try to naturally support healthy fallopian tube function, which is fabulous. Uh, but what they don't remember is that all that they're doing for their fallopian tubes works systemically. So there are changes happening everywhere. And while unblock the tube and get pregnant is the number one focus, they're not open to the fact or realizing that their increased or changed mood, decreased PMS, slight shifts in the menstrual cycle, um, no more ovulation pain, um, increased libido, increased energy, better digestion, better outlook, shift in mood, that all of those things can be a result of that program that they're using that they think is specifically targeting fallopian tubes, which it is, but it's working throughout the entire body. So beyond trusting, understanding that there are things that there are changes that you might see that don't necessarily seem to correlate with the specific issue you're working on energy and having an increase uh, you know a, a, a better mood and increased outlook doesn't necessarily correlate with fallopian tube right are you getting my point do you are you understanding what i'm trying to say here um 
obviously really good signs that your natural therapy program is working are things like decreases in PMS or a lighter period if your period is heavy or a shift in your cycle uh, um, in a positive way, whether it's in length or whether it's your luteal phase or whether it's um, your period has changed and seems more normal. Um, increases in energy and libido and um, a better outlook and certainly natural conception and pregnancy if that's your goal and a healthy birth and a healthy baby all of those are signs that a natural therapy program is working or has worked for you um yeah so uh, i i think you were probably hoping for or maybe thought you would get a little bit more out of me about um how to know that your natural therapy is working and um but any change really is a sign that it's working. And sometimes um, it's really important to understand that sometimes when you begin natural therapies, it feels like you're going back a step before you start going forward. Um, there is a thing in natural therapies that, um, or with natural medicine called a healing crisis. It's, not, it's a bad word. Crisis is a really scary word. But for some people who've been dealing with um, fertility health issues or overall systemic health issues for quite some time, when they begin a natural therapy program, they can take a step or two back, feel like things are temporarily getting worse before they begin to get better. So therein lies the reason for allowing the program time, staying in touch with the therapist you're working with or your herbalist, asking questions when you have them and never being afraid to ask questions and things like that. That's not the case for everyone. Many of us um, start taking our, our, our supplements and start using different natural therapies and start eating better and really don't feel like anything's happening for quite some time. Um, that is more common than the healing crisis part. Um, but trust, trust me and trust in yourself and trust in your body that the program that you've chosen for yourself um, has a purpose and is working in some way. And if after you know three to six months of using something, you truly aren't able to notice any change in anything, mood, your cycle, the specific fertility health issue you're dealing with, uh, digestion, um, elimination, anything at all, then it's time to perhaps reach out for some additional support to see if what you're taking is really the right thing or if maybe there's some more testing we should um, think about um, or anything like that. So allow it time and trust in what you're doing and the choice that you've made for yourself. So um, what do you guys have questions for me about? I see them coming in, so let's start asking questions. So you've been using Vitex, but you stopped using it when you're on your period. Is that the right approach? There are many people who, uh, many practitioners who say to stop using it while on your period. Um, but we found through our clinical use of Vitex and our research of it that it can be taken all cycle long. You don't have to stop during your period. In fact, we suggest taking it all cycle long um, for extended periods of time. Um, typically, Vitex takes a while to, to show its results, to show it's working in you. Uh, Vitex is one of those herbs that it takes time. It takes time to help the body balance. Um, so our suggested use is to take it every day, all day, for at least three months, three to six months. Um, and then, it, you know, it, you can actively try to conceive while taking it. And if you get pregnant uh, while taking Vitex to wean off of it in early pregnancy with the support of a midwife or your health care provider. So, um, keep taking your Vitex. Trust it. <laughs> what else, guys? What other questions? I saw a couple others and I missed them. If I don't have a significant problem, will natural therapy still work for me? Um, I'm curious why you're, what you're interested in and why. Uh, yes, I do believe that they will. Um, natural therapies is an all-encompassing sort of <laughs> broad, um, a broad description of what we do, but um, multivitamins and omega supplements are considered natural therapies or fall in that in that term uh, in this field, and they are like insurance for your diet. Um, they can be really helpful. Fertility massage and castor oil packs are lovely. You don't necessarily have to have a fertility health concern to use those. Uh, you absolutely don't have to have a fertility health concern to go on a walk and exercise and work on stress reduction techniques or use any sort of mind-body therapy uh, like Circle and Bloom, a guided meditation, if you're trying to conceive uh, and want to just uh, help yourself through that emotionally. So yes, there's 
potential for natural therapies to work even though you don't have a fertility health concern. Um, I use alcohol-free Vitex tinctures to affect glycerin-based. Alcohol-free Vitex tincture should still be effective. Um, I'm certain that the company that made that product um, put a lot of um, love and work into it. It should still be effective. Yeah, a lot of people don't use alcohol-based tinctures. You're welcome. What else? Is red, is red raspberry leaf tea okay in pregnancy? Um, it's often used in pregnancy by midwives. Yes, actually. Uh, it is suggested to be um, pause during the first trimester. So not many practitioners suggest red raspberry leaf during the first trimester, but they um, will suggest it in um, the second and third. So keep doing your research. Um, it's a great nutritious leaf. Yeah. I saw some questions. Go ahead and repost those, please. I'm here for questions now. Ask away. I used red raspberry leaf in my own pregnancies in the second and third trimester. Um, for whoever wants to know that, I made this wonderful tea. We have a tea recipe from our former senior herbalist, Aileen Barton, um, called the Three Peas Tea. It's delicious. That's something to consider. I'm taking the fertility greens. Can I take them during pregnancy? Um, our Fertilica Fertila Greens, can you clarify if that's the product you're taking? Um, if that's the case, that's not intended for use into pregnancy. Yes, okay. You can use them while trying to conceive. Um, and it, when you learn you're pregnant, um, it's best to switch to a pure green greens powder like organic spirulina or something like that. Um, Fertilla Greens has a small amount of some herbs in it um, that aren't often in, um, suggested for use in pregnancy. Um, where do you find the tea recipe you just mentioned, the three peas tea? Um, it's preconception, um, pregnancy and postpartum tea, I love it. It's on naturalfertilityinfo.com. You can go ahead and search there for um, just tea or the three capital P S peas tea, the three peas tea, and you should it should come up, but certainly contact our team if it doesn't. Um, you will, we'll be able to link you right to it. Yeah. What else, who else has questions? Is the, I have luteal phase detect, defect, excuse me, I was taking Vitex, should I add vitamin B6? Um, with luteal phase defect, Vitex is one herb that has been known to be helpful. Vitamin B6 is as well. If you're not getting that in a, um, the suggested amount in a multivitamin or your diet, you could consider it. We actually suggest dietary and supplement approaches to um, luteal phase defect before considering progesterone cream. Um, I don't know if you've read about that, but there's information about there, out there about progesterone cream and for luteal phase defect as well. But consider adding B6. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just missed that last question. Paste it again. Um, well, it would, it, so the, <laughs> um, we measure tinctures in drops. I'm sorry, I had to think through that. Um, this person asked, I use one milliliter of Vitex in the morning. It's best to take your entire dose in the morning. Yes, um, but follow the suggested use on the product that you purchase. That's really the best idea or approach. Um, I, we don't, we measure in drops, not milliliters. So I'm not exactly 32 drops. That could be about right. Yep, that, that's probably exactly right. Um, sometimes there's ranges, um, 30 to 60 drops can be the range typically. So, um, yeah, that should be just fine. But definitely follow the suggested use on the product that you purchase. What is the amount of vitamin D dosage to take while trying to conceive? That's a fabulous question. Um, it's going to differ for everybody. Vitamin D is really important. Um, in general, uh, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams is a, a really general dose for most people. Um, you can, your body can make that amount of vitamin D from sitting out in the sun um, for about 15 minutes, um, typically early to late morning sun, and having quite a bit of skin exposed, excuse me. Um, but it might differ for you. If you have vitamin D de deficiency, your doctor's probably going to suggest more. I know that there's 5,000 IU supplements available over the counter. You can just buy them in the store. Um, but I would start at around that 1,000 to 2,000 IU range. Um, I think that's what you'll find is most common. Um, if you're worried about your vitamin D levels, talk to your doctor about testing you. Yeah. Um, FSH is 111 and my estrogen is low. My periods have stopped not producing MREs. 
Um, can I know how old you are? May I know that? Can I ask that question? You're welcome. Welcome. We're having Q and A. So you're 35. Um, it, there may be there may be natural therapies to help. So um, we would definitely want to know a little bit more about you and your overall health and what you're dealing with. Um, we have a couple of articles on our informational website, naturalfertilityinfo.com, about FSH and um, estrogen levels and about when menstruation becomes irregular and um, hormone levels fluctuate and perhaps are high or low when you're in your mid-30s. Um, so reach out to the team. Um, Sarah and myself are the herbalists who answer um, these more in-depth questions and will um, get you linked to some information and um, ask you some more questions and then if we feel like a one-on-one -on -one fertility consultation might be best we'll definitely suggest that but um, go ahead and go to naturalfertilityshop.com and click that contact us button and send an email on over uh, I'd like to know more about you in order to um, offer some more in-depth support go ahead and paste your questions again you guys um, I know I missed a few do I have any advice for the two-week wait? Um, the two-week wait is an interesting time, is it not? <laughs> uh, exciting and nerve-wracking and stressful and happy and all of those emotions all at once. Um, my best suggestion during the two-week wait is to keep doing your exercise, keep eating as best as you can, keep taking your prenatal and your omega supplement, um, keep you drinking your fertility smoothies every morning, get outside, get some fresh air and some sun, um, consider um, mind-body therapies or affirmations if you're um, not in a really good place emotionally and you're really nervous or worried, those can be really help. Smoke weed, no, <laughs> um, probably not a good idea to be honest. Um, I would rather that you use some meditations or affirmations um, during the two week wait. If you're in, interested in implantation um, support, if that's something that's on your mind, uh, there are some evidence that pi eating pineapple core um, can help with implantation. There are some herbs that can be used during this time, things like the herbs in our blind utera calm. Um, so consider learning about all of those things. We do have some info on um, naturalfertilityinfo.com about the two week wait. And now back, hi Molly. And now back to um, smoking weed. So I can tell that you have an interest in that and that's fine. We don't necessarily think that smoking weed occasionally, marijuana that is, um, is really a bad thing. I'm, I'm personally not against it. Our company as a, as a whole is not against it on occasion. Um, but it's not something that we suggest that you do daily um, necessarily without guidance. There are a lot of natural health practitioners and herbalists who can guide you in its use if you are using it therapeutically and trying to conceive. Um, but it's not necessarily the best thing to do um, if you're in the two-week wait. Certainly not. Um, yeah. So it's it's a it's a touchy subject. I mean, everybody everybody has their own thoughts about that one. How do I increase egg health? It's a big topic, I know, but any tips would be great. So egg health, the number one way to support your egg health is to make dietary changes and eat as healthy as you can. <laughs> as many fresh, whole um, fruits and veggies all day, every day, um, lots of whole grains. Um, think the rainbow, um, big salads with lots of greens and reds and yellows and blues, lots of organic berries. Focus on the clean 15. Um, those are the thing, and the dirty dozen. Those are the things that the dirty dozen are the things you should always buy organic, and the clean fifteen are those that you don't have to consider organic, but they're whole foods, so fruits and veggies, and um, eat as well as you can. That's number one because we get the most nutrients from our diet. You're welcome. But then there are also supplements that support egg health: um, a whole food multivitamin, omegas, antioxidant supplements like Fertilica Choice antioxidants. Um, CoQ10 ubiquinol. CoQ10 is known to support cellular or health of the cells. So eggs and sperm, because eggs and sperm are cells. Um, 
lots of different things. Maca. Uh, maca is a wonderfully nutritious fertility superfood. Anything labeled a superfood. Those are all wonderful ways to support egg health. Can I take Fertilica Choice Antioxidants during the two-week wait and hopefully pregnancy? Um, Fertilica Choice Antioxidants can be taken during the two-week wait, but when you uh, think you are or confirm that you are pregnant, it's best to be stopped at that point. Um, it hasn't been studied in pregnancy. Um, we don't know if people are using it in pregnancy because we don't suggest it. Um, but the best way to get antioxidants in pregnancy really is through your diet. Those dark blue and purple berries and really, really dark green leafy veggies are the greatest way to get antioxidants. You have luteal phase defect, is there's progesterone cream, a one size fits all. So there are general suggested uses of progesterone cream, but it, necess not isn't, ne it isn't necessarily one size fits all. It really is best to have your progesterone levels tested before you begin using natural progesterone cream or, or any progesterone. Um, and have your doctor guide you in what dose is best for you. That being said, we know that many women use natural progesterone cream without doing the testing and they follow the general suggested usage and have success. So I know that's really not a specific answer, um, but we ask you to do, your to, to, to do your research to decide if it's right for you. Consider those dietary approaches to supporting the body um, through luteal phase, luteal phase defect. The things we talked about in the beginning of the scope, um, Vitex, making dietary changes, considering vitamin B6. And then um, if you still need support and your luteal phase isn't changing, you could consider progesterone cream if your levels have been determined to be low. Um, and then either your doctor will suggest you a dose or you could consider the general suggested dose, which is 20 milligrams in the morning and 20 milligrams in the evening. And that's of a progesterone cream that's applied to your skin, so transdermally. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, you're gonna have to email us about how much B6. I don't have that on the top of my head right now, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead and send an email and we can get you a general suggested dose. Your doctor suggested 600 milligrams of CoQ10. Post that one again about CoQ10 naturalfertilityinfo.com is where you can find the page about the two-week wait. Um, so naturalfertilityinfo.com, there's a search bar at the top, type in two-week wait and all of our articles that reference two-week wait will come up for you. All right, who else has questions? My dogs are just out here. They, uh, I am surprised they didn't come up to say hi. <laughs> yes, go ahead and contact us about B6, yeah. Hi, Nazar, again. <laughs> All right, anybody else have any questions? I wanted to see that CoQ10 question again. Your doctor suggested 600 micrograms. Um, that's not uncommon. Uh, for some people who have uh, are, are older, right, I'm sorry, um, but for women who are considered a little bit older and trying to conceive or your levels are low, um, it's not uncommon to start with 600 um, micrograms of CoQ10. I think it's micrograms or is it milligrams? Oh my gosh, I think no, it's milligrams, correct myself. Um, for a period of time, a couple of weeks usually, and um, then levels are known to plateau. So then usually uh, women go down to 100 milligrams to, for the duration to maintain. Um, something about uterocomb. I'm sorry I missed that one. See? At the very beginning I mentioned getting on a little bit of a tangent and the question's just disappearing. <laughs> that happens on Periscope. Um, I'm seeing your posts. Yeah, I can see you ask. Can you see my posts? You're welcome. So post again. Post your questions again. Uterocomb is awesome. It can be used in preparation for conception and through the first trimester of pregnancy. Um, it is an amazing blend. I love it for period cramps. Um, many women use it in preparation for conception. Um, if you are going through a medicated fertility procedure, so IUI, IVF, um, FET, and interested in uterocomb, you need to talk to your doctor about continuing it. Um, you can share with them any information that we have on our site about uterocomb, but they need to give you the okay to continue it um, during that procedure but it can be used in the first prim trimester of pregnancy. 
Anybody else have questions? What is your take on ovacetol, which is the combination of inositol and decarinositol? Um, we actually, uh, one of my next periscopes is going to be about inositol, to be honest. We're bringing on an inositol in our line of products. Uh, Fertilica will soon have a myo-inositol product. Um, inositol, I don't know ovacetol very well. I know of it uh, because I've looked at it uh, before, but inositol is um, known to be a really great product for helping the body um, with maintaining healthy insulin um, insulin levels. Uh, it helps to uh, helps some women with weight loss and distributing body uh, body fat for weight management and if they're working on losing weight. Um, what else? I just talked about this yesterday, but now all of the information I had in my head just flew away when I, when I was so excited that you asked. <laughs> uh, can be supportive of healthy, um, healthy, I believe it's LH and FSH ratios. Um, what else? Maybe um, soothing for the symptoms of women who um, have PCOS. Um, can support healthy ovulation. You know, and also has many benefits, many, many benefits. Um, I, I, you're taking it for PCOS. Yeah, it's often used by women with PCOS. Yep. Um, I am only this much familiar with NAPRO, so I won't go into what I know today because I don't know a lot, but we do have a little bit of information. If you want to email me um, your questions or what you're interested in knowing, I certainly can have a, an email conversation with you about that. Um, I was going to touch on something and then I missed it. You're welcome. Yeah, someone asked what their husband could take about um, to help with conception. Um, does he have a fertility health issue first? If he has a fertility health issue, there may be some more specific things for him. But there's um, male, males can cleanse. Males certainly can follow a healthy diet and exercise and reduce stress. Males should try not to work with their laptops on their laps or carry their cell phones in their pockets or wear tight underwear. They should wear boxers. Um, what else? There are all sorts of male supplements. Um, some of them are, you know, more specific to male fertility health issues and others aren't. Um, men can use all the supplement, all the fertility superfoods that women can. So maca, whey protein, royal jelly. Um, there's men's multivitamins. So omegas, men's, men can take omegas. So there's lots of things men can do too. Um, yeah, you both have been tested on unexplained fertility. I'm sorry, that is really hard, right? Um, so yes, focus on diet, make dietary changes. Start eating one giant dinner plate sized salad every day. Consider making a fertility smoothie for each of you every day, a uh, smoothie that you add uh, fertility superfoods to, goji berries, pumpkin seeds, maca, royal jelly, um, uh, a protein. Add some sort of protein powder, whether it's whey protein or plant protein, to your fertility to smoothie to make it balanced. Um, lean organic sources of protein in a meal. Um, go on a walk together. Um, what else? Consider some stress management reduction techniques together if that's your thing. Um, we have more information on our site. We have an entire guide about unexplained infertility. Acupuncture. Men can do acupuncture. Maybe that's something to consider. Um, just really try those foundational things to start boosting your health. Uh, herbs can be considered too if you feel like they fit your needs. Um, but it's really important just to focus on diet and lifestyle as a number one approach to unexplained infertility. I know I missed a few questions. I saw another progesterone thing, but I didn't read the whole thing. So go ahead and post more if you have them. I have a little bit more time. Is there any suitable time for yoga? Whenever you can fit it in. It doesn't have to be in. There isn't. No, you can do it whenever you need to. Um, yoga is awesome. Men can do yoga. Um, if you have time in the morning to start your day, it might be a fabulous way to do that. I know some who use yoga at the end of the day to de-stress. Um, there is such a thing as fertility yoga as well, if you're interested, but any yoga is fabulous. And that might be something interesting to do with your partner if he's willing, your husband if he's willing. What else? You're welcome.
I need to get back into yoga. <laughs> Every time someone asks about yoga, I'm like, oh, I should start doing that again. Does anyone have any other questions? The sun moved. Did you see that sun ray move a little bit? And that's kind of almost right over my head. I don't know if you can see it like I can. <laughs> Anybody else? Any more questions for me? Thank you for those who are joining just now. We're kind of towards the end of our talk. Um, so replay, welcome replay viewers. Best herb to help with ovulation. Um, there are several uh, to consider. Um, Vitex can be helpful. Tribulus can be helpful. Maca might be helpful. Uh, it just depends. Depends upon how you need help, right? Oh, great. I'm so glad. Hi. <laughs> My. Oh, did you find something? You want to say hi? Come here. Wave. Okay. Say hi. Can Say I hi. Have, have hi. This is my son. This is one son. <laughs> um, shh. Yeah, cool. Yep. Um, I was hoping to get my scope done before they came home from their, their park play, but I didn't quite make it. Yes, that was my little guy. Um, he's three and a half. So thank you for telling me he's so cute. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes, last night, they went into the neighbor's yard and plucked all of his tulips all of them. I was so mortified. <laughs> anyway, yes, thank you. He is my cutie. Tribulus and Vitex can be taken together. Absolutely. Yep. I know you guys think it's funny. I was so terrified. I mean, it's spring here and the tulips are amazing and this man's yard is all full and my kids plucked them all. What do we do? We can't do anything. Is Fertilica natural progesterone the one for low progesterone cream can... Um, is the one that's intended for preconception. So while you're preparing for conception, yes. Um, if you have de determined you have low progesterone, that could be an option. Yep. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me outside today. Um, I hope that it's a sunny, beautiful day where you are. And if not, that you're enjoying some relaxing time inside. And um, we will see you next week and soon we'll be talking more about that fertilica inositol it's coming we've got new products coming um inositol vitamin d3 and k2 and a calcium supplement so i'm going to bring those to you as soon as they arrive in my mailbox um, but until then i definitely will have some topics that we can talk about and i hope you have a wonderful day there's my other one <laughs> can you wave bye everybody